In this exercise, we're going to do a couple of common tasks um, in QGIS. The first is we're going to import a, a layer with a coastline, and then we're going to georectify a historical map, and then make some minor modifications uh, to the coastline using that historical map once it's georectified. The layers that I want to use for this lesson are found in Natural Earth Data. If you go to Downloads, Large Scale Data, Physical Coastlines, and get the large scale uh, size. Uh, and then let's download an image uh, a map of Shandong, China from 1917. There'll be an export button in the top right as you look at the map. And if you download the extra large size there, you'll end up with a, a file on your hard drive that should look like this. Here is the JPEG. And here is the shape file uh, for that. Keep these together um, in whatever folder you've saved your QGIS project file. To add the coast line, move the .shp shape file and drag and drop it on top of QGIS. That'll give us the world map uh, coastline here. What we're going to do next is take this historical image and then uh, georectify it here. If in your menus here you don't have the georectification plugin, you're going to have to add it. You do that by going up to plugins and manage plugins. And when you search for the georeferencer, you'll see that at least in my version of QGIS 3.2, there's a bug that only shows an install uh, for the uh, option furthest up there. This is just a bug in this version of the software, and by the time you watch this video, it may or may not have been fixed in the newest version. Um, in the meantime, the way around this is to scroll down to the georeferencer <laughs> Go to the place where you see that is plugged in there. And uh, all of that clicking somehow installed the plugin or, or had it show up. Uh, hopefully, this little bug is going to be fixed by the time that you. Um, uh, uh, you try this yourself. Now that we have the georeferencer in the software, uh, we're going to open it up, and it'll create a window that looks like this. <clears throat> what we first need to do is to select the image that we want to georeference. So we're going to go over here, and we're going to open raster. And then um, we're going to choose the image that we downloaded. Here, I'm going to choose the coordinate referring system that's the same as uh, the uh, one that uh, came with the coastline data. In order to tell QGIS where in the world this map is at, we're going to now have to go in and find some places in the world that correspond to places that are depicted on the map. Um, conveniently for us, this particular map has grid lines. So in other words, uh, if I were to zoom in here, this point where these two grid lines overlap is going to be at 116, or rather negative 116, uh, 116 and 38. If I now uh, click here on Add Point and click exactly where those two overlap, it'll prompt me for the uh, uh, coordinates in terms of uh, latitudes and longitudes. Uh, so the X, which says East, is your longitude, which is the vertical lines uh, going from the North to the South Pole which tells us how far east or west you are at. In this case, we know that it's 116, and we know that it's at 38 degrees north. 
Now, I would recommend that you do this for uh, quite a few points if you want to have a good accuracy. Um, for the purposes of this exercise, uh, I know beforehand that if we just do a few of these, 122 and 38, for example, it'll show up fine. There's 36 and 116. So I'm going to add a point there. Uh, this is 120 and 36. So I'm going to add a point there. And ideally, it's good to get a nice spread uh, of an equal number of points uh, across the entire map. Um, again, uh, for the purposes of this exercise, I'm not going to, to do that many uh, different points because I, I think that this will be enough uh, uh, as it is. Now, we want to tell it uh, what kind of transformation settings we're going to use. Um, I've had a lot of luck with thin plate spline, but if that method doesn't produce the results uh, that you want for your map, then you might want to choose another one. I'm doing uh, nearest neighbor, and I'm going to choose the project CRS here, and I'm going to load it in QGIS when it's done. Um, due to another bug here, uh, the output raster it's best to save that in the folder with your other files. This is giving you an indication of uh, where those dots uh, were indicated. That's, that's correct. If I now press the play button, it says the georeference was successful and the raster has been successfully georeferenced. And you'll see here that uh, we ended up with uh, the map being uh, warped to fit uh, the map that we have with the coastlines. Now, the kinds of maps that this will work with uh, are those that are based on good survey uh, data. It's not going to work with uh, earlier maps from earlier historical periods or ones that um, are not uh, done uh, with any degree of, of significant accuracy uh, based on, on surveys. Um, in this case, it worked out quite nicely. If you find that your map is in a completely wrong part of the world, uh, then you've probably got the latitudes and longitudes backwards. If you find that your map is bizarrely twisted and distorted and not even shaped properly, it's a good possibility that you've misentered one of your points. And uh, you can go back to the georeferencer uh, and uh, delete those points uh, and add them again and do the process over again. In our case, it worked out fine. When uh, when you close it, you can choose to save the points or not save them. I'm not going to save them because I'm pretty happy with where the map uh, came out. Uh, and now we can mess with the raster the the raster style in the properties here, uh, and we should be able to show the transparency a little bit higher, we can change the opacity so that uh, the map is not, I'm going to move the coastline up to the top here, and I'm going to change the coastline styling a little bit. I'll switch the color to black and widen the width of the coastline. And you'll see here something interesting. This map from 1917 
shows the coastline slightly different. Uh, and that's something that we would expect given the fact uh, that this is where the Yellow River comes out. Um, so one possibility here is that there's been a lot of land reclamation uh, in this area or a lot of silt built up uh, from where the river comes out. Whatever the reason happens to be, we're dealing here with a coastline that is different than the one from our historical map. So one of the ways that this historical map immediately becomes useful is that it shows us uh, the coastline at a different moment in historical time. So the next thing that I'd like to do is uh, for us to get in and change this coastline here. But let's do that in the next video.